what can we do to reverse global warming? Become aware of the solutions and think about the actions you can take as you listen to how we are drawing down in Pennsylvania. Recall what you last ate. Have you ever been curious about the origin of your food? When asked about what contributes to global warming, many people would probably not think that their food, specifically how it is produced and processed, is a major source of greenhouse gas emissions. According to Project Drawdown, if you add to emissions from livestock, all other food-related emissions from farming to deforestation to food waste, what we eat turns out to be one of the greatest causes of global warming. This is Nadia Shepard, a research intern from the Rodale Institute in Cutstown, Pennsylvania, here to talk about the importance of taking care of soil health one of the project drawdown solutions. Which is really imperative as we go into a more unstable future and a future that has more people as well. Another area of the food sector of project drawdown includes food security. Pennsylvania is engaged in efforts to reduce food insecurity and food waste according to Mrs. Clement Smith, the executive director of Feeding Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is a leader in agriculture. We have 57,000 farms in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So to say that food is scarce is crazy. There's a ton of food to be had. It's just working on innovative ways to make sure that we as food banks and the Charitable Food Network are providing as much access to that food. And I think we've really come a long way in that. Feeding Pennsylvania was created to help distribute food to food insecure individuals. Feeding Pennsylvania is the state association of Feeding America food banks. We represent the Feeding America food banks in Pennsylvania that distribute over 160 million pounds of food annually to more than 2 million food insecure individuals. Our food banks are large distribution warehouses, and they work with partner agencies that deliver the food to the clients. So within Pennsylvania, we have a network of 2,600 of those agencies, and agencies can be anything from small food pantries, church food pantries, shelters, feeding programs, you name it, they run the gamut. In addition to their food distribution work at the state level, Feeding Pennsylvania also works on advocacy at the federal level. We definitely provide a collective voice for those who are food insecure across Pennsylvania. We work with our national partner, Feeding America, on federal advocacy issues. We work with our members at the state capitol to advocate for issues within Pennsylvania. Here, Mrs. Clement Smith discusses the importance of having fresh food for the health of both Pennsylvania citizens and the nation as a whole. Fresh food is incredibly important to your health. And I think we're finding that chronic diseases like diabetes, obesity, and heart disease are more prevalent amongst people who are food insecure because often fresh food is more expensive. And things like fast food and processed food is less expensive. So when they're trying to maximize their dollars, they're tending to go to that unhealthy food. And it really does come back to their health and the cost of health care. It's a full circle effect when you look at people's diets and the other things that they are challenged with when it comes to their health. So we want to make sure that they have access to all of that. In order to reduce food waste, farms consider the profit gained from a particular item, which takes into account the cost of harvesting and processing. Feeding Pennsylvania encourages farms to donate the surplus by covering some of the cost. 
So Feeding Pennsylvania and our member food banks have been long tackling the, the idea of food waste where we can. We often talk about surplus agricultural products that don't have a home. So produce that maybe is being composted or plowed under that is perfectly edible, but there's a cost involved with getting that product out of the field. Milk that maybe is going to waste because of the milk glut that Pennsylvania has been seeing. So how do we fit in with that? So we've done a number of different initiatives. One of them we're most proud of is the Pennsylvania Agricultural Surplus System. So since 2015, the state of Pennsylvania, through our Department of Agriculture, has funded the Pennsylvania Agricultural Surplus System, which is money that can be used by our food banks to cover the costs associated with harvesting, processing, packaging, and transporting surplus products that can be anything from fruits and vegetables to eggs, dairy, meat, and grains, and then getting that to families in need. So I think for a long time, there was the idea in the Charitable Food Network that agricultural partners should just be donating surplus products. But it's really, it's not realistic to expect ag, which is already facing their own business challenges, to do that for free. So basically in PATH, as we call it, the Penn Ag Surplus System, we're working with farmers to say, donate the product to us and we can cover the cost for getting it out of the field. So we're talking about the cost associated with picking the extra apples out of the orchard and maybe packaging it into five pound bags to be taken home by families. Feeding Pennsylvania has been active in ensuring that eggs and dairy products are not wasted. We don't want to see fresh milk going into a manure pit. We'd like to use that milk, and so we've been using PATH dollars to process the milk into cheese, which obviously has a longer shelf life, and then getting that out to families who would love access to more fresh cheese. We worked with egg producers. There's been times when the production of eggs just continues to grow and maybe the egg market isn't growing with it, but those chickens continue to lay the egg. So we've worked with egg producers to say, hey, we know that there is a cost to getting those eggs into the dozen egg cartons. So we've worked with those egg producers to pay anywhere from 13 to 90 cents a dozen to put those eggs into those cartons so that they're ready to be taken home by a family. Feeding Pennsylvania works beyond milk and eggs, but also with livestock to save food and fundings. We're working with fairs across Pennsylvania to work with their livestock sales so that if somebody wants to purchase, for example, a hog at a livestock sale, we can use past funds to process that meat into family-sized packaging to get it out to families in need. So food is available. We don't want to see it go to waste. So we've been working, like I said, with our state legislature on that PATH program. We've been able to save about 10 million pounds of fresh Pennsylvania produced food. And that's gone out to 67 counties. um, And and that's since 2015. It's a million and a half dollars in the appropriation each year. And our food banks, working with partners in agriculture have been advocating to get an increase in that allocation. So we've gone from a million dollars in 2015 to last year, we were able to increase it to a million and a half dollars. That program has been so successful that Feeding Pennsylvania was able to work with Senator Casey's office through the passage of the last farm bill to include a farm to food bank act, which would help food banks work with ag producers across the nation to get access to their surplus product using the same methods that the past program has used. I think that often it's more about educating agriculture partners on what we can use. So if uh, Apple maybe has a small bruise on it, maybe it doesn't meet retail standards, but it's perfectly edible Apple. And so trying to work with our retail partners, our agriculture partners, to let them know that, you know, we can get that product out as long as we have enough time on it. Taking care of the land in which our food is grown is also vital in reducing greenhouse gas in the atmosphere, thus reversing global warming. 
One of the solutions described by Project Drawdown is regenerative agriculture, which is currently being researched at the Rodale Institute, as described by Ms. Shepard. The Rodale Institute is an organic research institute and a lot of, for example, our farming systems trial is now 38 years old and has been studying organic versus conventional agriculture side by side and looking at how that affects soil health and how that affects nutrient density in the crops. Here, Ms. Shepard explains what regenerative agriculture means. Regenerative agriculture is like a step up from organic agriculture because organic agriculture is a lot about maintaining the ecosystem and soil and farm health that exists on a farm, while regenerative agriculture works on building soil health, maintaining animal welfare, and also incorporating social fairness into a farming system. Regenerative agriculture, like the name indicates, is about not only just maintaining the soil and farm health that there is, but building it back and building the capacity of the health of the land. Overall, despite knowing the benefits of regenerative agriculture, there are still some challenges. A big hurdle is educating farmers and helping and having the research to convince them that financially it is a good choice to make to invest in regenerative agriculture and the support and resources to help them incorporate that into their everyday practices. However, there are bigger and better steps that we need to make and regenerative agriculture is possibly another step further that we need to take to ensure that our food is truly produced sustainably. Within Pennsylvania, efforts to reduce food waste are underway, both from the source and distribution points, as explained by Mrs. Clement Smith. We've also worked with retail partners to do retail pickups, so you were long seeing your regular grocery stores when product gets close to expiration, throwing some of that product out. Now we have partnerships with all of our grocery stores in Pennsylvania, including Walmart, and we do retail pickup. And often it's connecting at the local pantries with that grocery store to come multiple times a week and pick up their produce that might be ripening or any of the product that could be close to expiration. One major source of food waste comes from grocery stores where new products and produce are constantly brought in to keep up with the demand. For example, giant grocery stores in Pennsylvania have a new program within the last several years called Meet the Needs, M-E-A-T. And basically when their meat is getting close to that sell-by date, whereas before they really didn't have a place to take it, now they're taking it to cold storage, freezing that meat, and bringing several loads a week to our food banks. And this is great for us because it's, like I said, family-sized packaging, that one to two pound thing of chicken that a family can take home and easily put in the freezer or thaw and cook right away. So I really think it's more about sitting down with a lot of our retail partners. They, they don't want to throw it out, but they have other food coming. So I think food banks have really invested in the transportation and infrastructure and connecting these food retailers with their local pantry and making sure that we meet them where they need us. And I, I think that's really what it is. It's a partnership of all of us working together. The need to eliminate food waste in Pennsylvania is crucial in both reducing greenhouse gas emissions and also reducing food insecurity among individuals and families. Here, Mrs. Clement Smith discusses what an average person can do in order to support the effort. There is an estimated 1.7 million Pennsylvanians who don't have access to enough food. So that's 13% of our state's population. And half a million of them are children. And so when we talk about that, we often talk about Penn, you go to Penn State, Beaver Stadium, and State College. 
So half a million children would be filling that stadium five times with the amount of children who are facing hunger. It, it's, it's unacceptable. And so when we talk to people about getting involved, we often talk to them about the number one thing you can do is donate because our food banks have the partnerships, but, you know, produce is not inexpensive. And so we do need the funds to be able to go out and have access to all of this. So we definitely need support when it comes to fundraising. Getting involved in some of these community gardens that donate to their local food pantry is a great way to get involved. Pantries definitely want more produce, and so if you can find ways to grow and help them grow some produce, that would be great. And then talking to your grocery stores and your restaurants and, and any food services, if you can talk to them and say, what are you doing you know, with your excess product? Are you connected with your local food bank or food pantry? It's really about asking the questions and holding your community accountable for what they're doing as far as food waste and serving those people in the community that are facing hunger. There's somebody facing hunger in every single community, rural and urban in Pennsylvania. It is everywhere. So making sure that we're asking the questions is really the best way to make sure we're holding each other accountable. Feeding Pennsylvania brings it back to education, which is something that we can all participate in. When I think about food waste, I really think it's an education process. Some of it is also on us to educate those who are food insecure about how to prepare some of these fresh foods. So some people, you know, this may sound crazy, but I've worked with food banks in Maryland who have said, we finally figured out that some of the people we serve don't know how to prepare a potato. You know, it's as simple as that. How can I cook a potato? And, and I here I only have a microwave, not an oven. So how can I prepare this potato? Or how do you prepare zucchini? How do you prepare eggplant? There's all different things that are grown throughout the year. And trying to help our clients with nutrition education is a huge priority for Feeding Pennsylvania and our partners over the next couple of years. So we're really looking at what's in season and then how do we reach some of them through recipes online, through recipes at the pantries, and then through cooking demonstrations to show clients interesting ways to prepare this food so that children, you know, have access, but not just access, but delicious ways to enjoy fresh produce or meat or cheese or things like that. So I think a lot of it just comes down to education. It is not just educating those that are food insecure, but also the purchasers and consumers, especially in the food service industry. I think it's really about educating consumers on buying the appropriate amount, educating our restaurants and the folks that are doing any kind of catering to look at food standards and ways that they can reduce food waste. And then if they have excess, making sure they're working with our huge charitable food network to get that excess out to people who need it. Although there are challenges in the food sector, It is clear that Pennsylvania is successful with their efforts to reverse global warming. And there are still more opportunities for greater success with greater involvement from individuals to schools to businesses. Thanks for listening. This is Anna from Penn State Brandywine.